tell me what to say. Hello and welcome to another exciting new episode of Sidious Nivich with S.B. Ree Brown and Gourmet Pens. I can introduce myself. Gourmet Pens. Gourmet. Go, 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 gourmet Pens. Gourmet. Go, 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 gourmet Pens. I thought we'd do a dubstep. The cat looks really distressed. Yeah, like, well, I would be distressed if that would happen. The cat is on my lap. Anyway, today we'll have a look at a pen that uh, has not been covered a lot on, on my channel, at least. And that is Caron Dash from Switzerland. They make very neutral pens. And prop of the week, by the way. Yeah, prop of the week. Sorry, yes, the sunglasses. And this is the pen we'll have a look at today. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what were your <laughs> first impressions of the Le Mans Caviar? Oh, yeah. That's the pen we're covering. Um. Should you be wondering. Where did we get this pen, Stephen? Oh! <laughs> God, it's so rude, isn't it? Oh. We got this pen from yours, Applebaum, from uh, Applebaum Pennon. He sent this to us to review. We are sending it back. And uh, we are very grateful to yours for uh, lending us the pen. Because Thank it's you. a 620 euro pen. So thanks for the confidence. Yes. Um, and thank you for mentioning the price, because that is a good preface to what I'm going to say about the packaging. For 620 euros, I must admit, I expected a little bit more. I don't usually keep my packaging anyway, but um, I still expected more, I guess. It's just a clamshell, and it comes with two cute little cartridges and the box. I mean, uh, the, the owner's guide thing, you know? But, I mean, on one hand, I'm kind of glad, because if I were, if, if I purchased the pen, it's kind of a relief to not have to keep the box, but for those of you who want to keep the box, I it's mean, not spectacular. it's not spectacular, and it's a serious pen. Yeah. So, and serious, I mean... Is it serious? Yeah, I mean, the pen sitting on the bed in the box is very pretty. It's, it's obvious, it's really well made, it's very well put together, I mean, there are no... There's no, like, discrepancies in the spacing or anything. It's just, it's really well done. So it's kind of dissonant, you know? It's like, okay, the box is like, meh. But the pen is like, oh, yeah. So, <coughs> anyway. Um, so the first impressions were mixed, but once I got to the pen and, and held it and really observed it, I, I was totally over the packaging anyway. So first impressions of the pen were... Quite positive. This is actually the first uh, Caron Dash pen I've really worked with. I've seen them in stores and stuff, but this is a really beautiful pen, and uh, that was pretty impressive for me. I, I, there's a lot of detail on here that we will just like we will go over it, but there's a lot of detail that really got me in a good way. Yes, my first impressions, I agree with Aziza. The, the, the box is not really spectacular, but the pen looks really nice. It's it's a robust pen, a lot of metal, heavy, um, and <clears throat> I think I just want to mention that here, it's a guillotte, mm -hmm. um, a guillotte pattern engraving in it, I don't know where you can see that, but it's fish scales, it is called the caviar. And then um, there's pic there's close-ups on um, yes. On the, oh, then apparently the there is a bronze lacquer on it that, that amber it tinted a, bronze lacquer. Very nice. And the interesting it's a thing beautiful is beautiful color. Although you have these fish scales, you don't feel them. It is completely smooth because of the lacquer, which which is very very interesting because it it, it looks like a textured pen, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel like one. And I that that was a first impression that that really struck me. Yeah. Because I was expecting to feel. For example, my Yardelet uh, Retro Grand has a barley pattern that really has the texture. It looks a bit like this. This is completely smooth, so it's very interesting. Yeah. But I think the question is, what makes this whoops? What makes this pen special? Okay, I'm gonna hold it. Um, I like it when you hold. Well, it is their high-end pen. I mean, I know yeah. all of their pens are really nice, but it is their. I guess you could use the term flagship. I thought it was. They also make these extremely expensive pens like the Chalograph. If anyone wants to give one to me, I would not say no. Yeah, but yeah. I mean. But those are special editions. Pelican makes some like crazy, yeah, exactly. like crazy $5,000 plus pens. In their production line, I would say these are the, the flagship pens. Very colorful, a lot of colors. You have them in orange and blue and all kinds of colors, and this is somewhat more special edition, I would say. 
but but if you know more about the particular like this brand or this particular model, again, this is the first cut and dash pen I've really used. Um, I don't really know much about this particular lineup. So if you know, please do let us know because it would be great to have some input. Or if there's any cut and dash uh, knowers out there. I think what makes it special is also the, the material and the finish because usually I think they are unicolor so the barrel is just well, it, blue. It, it is called the Lehman Caviar yeah. and um, I think the pattern that they managed to, to get on the cap and barrel is really great yeah. and the color, the, this is, it's such a fascinating color. It's you really expect the the texture of the fish scales i'm going to hold it up a little closer i mean you really expect i don't know if it'll focus let's see yeah you could see that i think at least to some extent you really expect to feel that and it's like it's just totally polished and glossy it's yeah. so neat anyway i think that's what makes it special yeah, the yeah, caviar yeah, yeah. finish now what was your writing experience? Why don't you talk about yours? Because I writing just rambled. Um, as to the nib, really nice, well tuned, good flow. I didn't really have any issues with it. As to the pen itself, during writing, for me the section is very thin. It's skinny. It's a nice barrel, but it tapers down significantly, and that made the writing experience a little bit difficult for me because I thought it was a little too thin for my personal hand size and, and preferences mm -hmm. but again as to the nib no complaints whatsoever mm -hmm. what about yours um i agree i mean this pen is not huge i'm trying to put it at a spot that you can see here it's not a, a huge pen or anything it's actually a really nice size it's beautifully weighted very well balanced um so it feels really nice in hand the nib, okay, I have to describe this nib in a little more detail. It's an 18 karat gold nib. Uh, this is the medium. Like he said, the, it was really well tuned. There, I had no issues with it. No hard starts, no skips. Excellent flow. This is a nib that is not um, super smooth, and it, it has a little bit of tooth to it, but in a good way. I mean, it's the kind, it, I think it had just the right balance. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's part of what makes it so expensive. It was just really, yep. Yep. like, bang on. And it's slightly springy in a, it, it, like, not flexy way. So you could expect a little bit of a soft experience here. Yep. That sounds really weird. A little bit of a soft writing experience. Um, and what I also really loved, the nib sings. So I know that sounds like nothing if you've never had that happen before. The when you're writing, it's are like alive with the sound of <laughs> nibbage. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not scratchy. It's not like it's not like a sound, but it's like you know when you uh, you have a crystal glass and you run your finger around the top, like the rim, and it goes like you know that sound. That's that's what the nib does when it's on paper. It's just so cool. And if you've never had that happen before, that's really crappy. But if you have had that happen before, it's something that's really satisfying. It's a climactic experience. At least for me. I really... <coughs> Sorry. I really enjoy it. So, I have to say, this nib, the nib really impressed me. Uh, like he said, though, the, the drop down from the barrel to the section, I think... It's rather significant. It is significant. And even for me, who... I mean, I, my hands are clearly not as big as his. I did not find the section itself uncomfortable, but what is uncomfortable is the the difference in the drop. So the size of the barrel to the section, if that makes sense. It's just a little too obvious. The section is, did get a little slippery for me because it is very smooth. And there is there is a slight indent, but there's no real flare back right before the nib. So it's... I mean, it, it does feel slippery and, and your fingers eventually do move around. Which is a huge disappointment because this nib is, at least for me, the, the nib was spectacular. So, and also the pen just looks really cool. So I, I found that pretty disappointing. Yep. Um, I think 
if you are looking for this type of pen for short writing experiences, like just for like scribbling notes or just signing your name or something, you're not going to have any issues. But I mean, I, I actually write pages and pages with my fountain pens. And in that case, this pen just didn't, it, it wouldn't work. I tried to do it and I had to keep rearranging and I, I even tried like wiping the section a few times to see if it would make it easier to grip it. It, it didn't. We even used sandpaper to sand. No, it didn't. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, yours. Um. Anyway, so nib. So great. So enjoyable. So pleasant. I know I'm going on and on, but I just really, really enjoyed the nib. So I want to convey to you that it was very conflicting for me because the pen is gorgeous. The the comfort. Like, the the weight was really great, the balance was great, but the section just killed it. Yeah. I, it, it was just, I was, oh, no. Well, I think this has covered what you love and hate about it. Yeah, you which is great. Nib, so I've just looks, rambled for like 20 minutes, the, and I'm sure people want to stuff socks section. in my mouth. I wouldn't. No. And what I love <coughs> and hate about it is pretty much the same thing. So I'll keep it short. I love Sorry. the looks of the pen. I love the, no, that's all right. I love the nib. But for me, the section is uncomfortable. It's not terrible, but it is slippery. Even now, just just holding it, yeah, I already feel this getting slippery. Um, yeah, so that's why I mean, just like signing your name or just you know writing the date or just like a short scribble would and be also, fine. And also, there's very little to hold on to it. It's a very minor hourglass shape, mm -hmm. but it definitely does not flare out as much at the end as it does at this end. Um, so there isn't really a lot to hold on to. There's not a cap lip or anything that would really... There's no texture to it. No. It's just completely polished. And that for me is, is an issue. Yeah. Now, the question is, 620 euros, would you buy it? I would not buy it. Even though I thoroughly enjoyed the nib, I it's just too difficult to use. Yeah. I agree. I would not buy it either. Especially not at this price. Were this to be 260 euro pen, where you just take the same numbers, but you move them around a little bit, then maybe, maybe, but at this price, definitely not. Um, now, of course, the big question is, is it or is it not serious nib? For this, we bring out the trusty snibometer. Oh, yeah. Snibometer. Um, for me, I think we're just over halfway. And the reason for that, this nib is really awesome. Not your hair stuck on it. So. Oh, disgusting. The nib is really awesome. It's really yes. enjoyable. I, Again, I thought it was <clears throat> really great, very well tuned, but for me it was that perfect balance of smooth and tooth and springiness and the nib singing. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, the finish is gorgeous, but I can't really use the pen because it just slides around and it's slippery and it's uncomfortable to grip, so I mean... It has a lot going for it, but I can't really use it, so... I have moved the uh, snibometer indicator a little bit to the serious nibbage side because I do think it's clear that a lot of craftsmanship went into this. Yeah. It is ex excellently put together. It's really meticulous. Nice the finish is meticulous. But this section, maybe we got an extremely polished one or something, I don't know. But in any No, case, but it's not just the polish, it's also the size, yeah, right? I mean... I, I think that is a... That's a, a I mean, even idea. for me that's an issue and generally I could use I, I can handle pretty small sections I'm working on a birdometer you can rate a bird's qualities by moving a dial that's awfully chauvinistic no I just like birds anyway uh, let's conclude by what else could you buy if you don't want to buy a Le Mans well it's 620 euros, so that would give you some leeway to pick a pen. Yeah, I, so. I think you could look at, I mean, at this price point, you could look at something like a, a Sailor King of Pen, mm -hmm. uh, which I think might be a little higher, but if you look around, you could probably find it for about the same price. Uh, it is a cartridge converter. You could get a Graffon Faber-Castell, yep. um, like the Anello Titanium, which also has a similar feeling to the nib. Yeah, because that's, you know, that's another thing. 620 euros, and it is a cartridge converter filled pen. Mm -hmm. Which is not... I know we have and brought listen. that up a lot. Oh, you can't hear it. Uh, there is a rubber <laughs> O-ring. There's a there. rubber O-ring, and... Oh, wait. It's pretty loud. Yeah, it's... 
But anyway, that's not a that's not necessarily a deal breaker, and I know that some people really really don't mind cartridge converters. I don't really mind cartridge converters, but at this price level, I think you really start to look at piston fillers. So mm -hmm. I would say that uh, Pelican. Yeah, uh, you, you can, can look get at a, Pelicans. You can get an M1000 that you can, uh, easy. You can get a a Mont Blanc, maybe 146 or something at this price, which would be about this size. At I 620, think. you could probably get close to a 149 too, right? Uh, yeah, it may depend a little bit on where you put anyway. but in any case, that, that, the Mont Blanc brand is an option. I think if you're um, looking for a metal pen cartridge converter uh, with a similar nib, you should be looking at a Graffon Faber-Castell Anello Titanium, something like that. Yeah, also if you like this this type of the, the shape and metal, you could look at a, a, a Lamy 2000 metal which is $300, it's yeah. definitely more modern than classic looking, but it has about this shape, mm -hmm. about this size, about the weight, mm -hmm. I think, uh, and that is a piston filler, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's just $300, uh, dollars. so that's uh, that's interesting. So I would say, I mean, you can even look at Visconti's in that price range, so there is a, a lot to, to pick from it when, when you have when you willing to spend this there's no money. doubting it's and you can't argue it's not beautiful no right? it's, it's, absolutely it's beautiful gorgeous. the nib was awesome yeah. I it's just I couldn't use it yeah. so no that, that makes sense um, so All if right. you need if you know you can handle a section like this go for it but it, if not it's probably better to hold one before you buy it also for 620 euros you can pretty much furnish your house if you go to Ikea that's not an alternative cool. we'd like to bring up. But it is a cut on dash. So, you know, you are, you are getting a, a, a serious pen. pen. I mean, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty prestigious pen. Well, we <coughs> hope this was useful. Yeah. And we'll gladly see you later. Maybe. Probably. Probably. Bye. And just to make sure that how awesome the box is, listen to this. Bye! Maybe you can switch it off. Now we're going to pack this up to send it home. Yes. If I were to get one as a gift, I wouldn't complain though. No. Uh. <laughs> Cocktail it on that. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. It's on.